Hey FBC family, it's Patrick Levis, your friendly neighborhood worship pastor, leading you in praise each week from my office, in my house, all alone, so far away from all of you. <laughs> But seriously, I just wanna say Natalie and I miss you all so much. I hope you're doing well. This has been super goofy to make videos in our, in our offices. Uh, we're doing what we can. And hopefully this one today encourages you. And I'll give you a little, uh, a little fun game that you can play while you watch at least my videos. Listen and see if you can detect uh, the screams and songs of my four children now. Uh, I, believe it or not, I believe that when my kids are singing uh, songs from Frozen 2 and my newborn baby Remington is screaming at the top of her lungs, they actually can sometimes blend together and harmonize. It's incredible. You can listen for it. <laughs> but what this video is really about, it is my turn to point you to some book recommendations today. And I thought I'd go super personal with my book list. So you'll need to go on a little bit of a journey with me into my past because these are three of my favorite Christian living books of all time, which were all books that I fell in love with in my late teens or early 20s. The first of my top three books is The Discipline of Grace by Jerry Bridges. Look at this thing, the laminates falling off of it. I think I've chewed through this like a handful of times over the last couple of decades. Um, such a helpful book for me all throughout life. Jerry Bridges has always been one of those authors that, that I feel like makes everything so accessible. He, he's, he's not patronizing, like he's not putting things so low shelf that you feel like he's just repeating and, and, and talking down to you, but more so he takes these awesome foundational biblical concepts and he, and he makes them bite size and he digs them down into real life. I remember I was 17 years old when this book was recommended to me by one of my small group leaders when I was a high schooler going to Grace Community Church. And my, my small group leader at the time actually shared a story about being so impacted by reading this book that he actually, he was reading on his bed and he fell off of his bed and just laid prostrate on the ground and he just said, Lord, please forgive me for not pursuing you out of an understanding of your grace. Uh, that's about how I feel about this book to this day. So many years later, it's impacted me in similar ways. The title kind of communicates what it is with a little bit of a play on words. It's the discipline of grace. Well, how's that work? It's grace that's disciplining us to live for Christ, to pursue holiness. So the believer sees the fact that I've been forgiven so much and then out of that realization and that excitement even over the way that the gospel has uh, brought us forgiveness, the grace that God has shown us, out of that realization, every single day, every moment of your day, you're living to pursue Christ. Listen, if you only just read chapter three, uh, which is all about preaching the gospel to yourself, uh, you'll, you'll have tons of impact on your heart and tons of motivation, I believe, to pursue the Lord, especially at this time. Second is actually another Jerry Bridges book, The Joy of Fearing God. And I suppose this one is, is maybe the most appropriate for the season that we're in. No doubt at some point, the virus and circumstances and the uncertainty that's all around you has squeezed up some fears out of your heart. And maybe not the most godly of fears, maybe fears that don't have in perspective the sovereignty of God over all things. And this book lays out the character of God in a devotional style that's just a reminder that there, there is no one and, and nothing that is to be more reverentially feared in all the universe than our great God. And then he gives you in this book the good news that while he is frighteningly powerful, uh, a, a powerful God of wrath, to the repentant believer in Jesus, he is our nearest and most intimate friend and the lover of our souls. Let me give you a little bridges out of the joy of fearing God. He says this in the chapter on God's love. Too often we're compelled not by love, but by a sense of duty or obligation. God does not delight in that kind of motive. He delights in our heart response of love. His love to us and our love to him in return work together to produce the joy of fearing God. 
And last blast from my past is a book by none other than the Prince of Preachers, Charles Haddon Spurgeon, or as my kids like to refer to him, Spurge. This is a book that's a compilation of his lectures to his students on the topic of evangelism called The Soul Winner. There is gold on every page of this book. I've had this little book in my arsenal for years and years, and it's always been that great uh, jump start uh, to my heart for the lost. And boy, right now, don't we have such incredible, unique opportunities to reach those who don't yet know Christ while we're in some ways trapped in our homes, but having lots of touch on digital platforms. If you need a jump start on your heart uh, to be excited about evangelism and proclaiming God's good news of the gospel, the soul winner, Charles Spurgeon. Uh, as far as what I'm reading right now, I'm currently doing an online class at the Master's Seminary in, in, on the topic of charismatic theology, which has just been an incredible study. Uh, but the reading load for that class is pretty steep, so I'm, I'm deep into a, a, a lot of really good books, but it, it's a lot of reading material, so I haven't done a lot outside of that class's assigned reading. If you do want to dive deep into the discussion of whether or not the miraculous gifts are, uh, that, that are described in Scripture are, are in use today, then you can send me a text and I'll, I'll share that list with you. But I have been meditating and, and praying through this recently released uh, Puritan prayer book called Piercing Heaven. Really great book, and I, I think it's one that a lot in our church family, I, I've been hearing people, it's kind of the, the fun one that everyone's been talking about right now. And with my kids, obviously we're reading a lot of Bible this week especially, looking at the Passion Week and, and the events leading up to the cross and the resurrection. We're actually acting out all of the, the Bible stories as we read them. I always play the donkey. I don't know how I get stuck in that role, but I do every time. Uh, but the one fun one that my girls and I have been really having a lot of fun and enjoying is C.S. Lewis's Narnia books. Um, we pulled them out, blew the dust off, and uh, we're right at the end of, the, of just the first one, The Magician's Nephew. And my two oldest daughters are just completely mesmerized by the world of Narnia and, and the grandeur of Aslan, the king. It's been an awesome way to kind of have gospel conversations with them as we look at the story and we see how it parallels redemptive history. Just so much fun. We're loving it. So that's my book highlight for you. I hope you are diving deep into God's word and you are feasting on good books that are stirring your heart toward Christ and motivating you to glorify him in every day, especially in this time.